This video demonstrates the dynamic charting capabilities of XLRT. XLRT is a spreadsheet application engine. The idea is you can use spreadsheet techniques to create different sheets in a workbook and then supplement that with powerful commands to read and write text files, present interactive dialogues, connect to a database, or interact with content from the internet and turn that into a fully functioning application that can then be wrapped into a standalone licensed Mac application, Windows application, or load that same file into Excel or T Cloud and run it in a browser from any computer or device. A dynamic chart essentially takes data and shows it in some type of graphically pleasing way. In this case, we're going to take three columns of data, January, February, and March, for three different games that are being sold in a store. And we're just going to chart out the sales in a bar chart. Uh, and we've uh, added kind of a background image behind the uh, chart. So as the values in this uh, table change, those values will be dynamically uh, presented within this chart. The XLRT runtime environment that a user uses is exactly the same as the builder environment that a developer uses, except in the developer uh, environment there's a ribbon of tools that the developer uses to create and edit and test the application. For adding a chart, we're going to be using these three tools, the control add delete tool or the control edit tool or the control move and size tool because a chart is just a special type of form control. For example, if we uh, wanted to move this existing chart to a different location, we could uh, select this tool and then just drag the uh, top left corner of the chart to some other location on the sheet. If we wanted to uh, edit the chart, we could select the uh, tool for editing and when we click on the chart we get uh, the form control dialog and that allows us to select the type of chart or the type of form control that we want, in this case chart and the type of chart and there's lots of different chart types supported and then when we click edit we'll go into the chart editor and then we'll have uh, almost infinite possible combinations for picking a style for a particular type of chart and customizing all the different aspects of a chart. Now we'll start from scratch and define a chart. We're going to start by clicking on the Control Add Delete tool and just click somewhere where we want to put the chart. We'll call it Chart 1. For the uh, form control, we're going to pick Type Chart, click OK, and we have the starting point of a chart here. Let's move that down a bit. and. Then let's use the chart or the control edit tool, click it, and we get the form control dialog. Now from this dialog, we can pick the major type of chart uh, that we want to set up here. And here's the main types of charts. So we're going to just go with a column chart and click edit to get into the uh, first thing we see is the dialog to pick a range of cells that we're going to use for the data for our chart. So let's just take uh, from A1 down to H11, that collection of cells there on sheet one. So A1 to H11. And when we click OK, it then takes us into the chart editor. And inside the chart editor, it's taken our range of cells and from that it's determined how many different series of data 
that we're going to uh, be charting. And those series of data are essentially the, uh, the different months or columns here. And within each series, we've got a run of data, which is associated with the names of these different games uh, that we're charting. So all that, is, all that is kind of derived automatically by default from the, the initial range that you select. And, and you can customize that later if you need to. But uh, generally, that's uh, all handled for you. If we look at our preview, we can see what our chart looks like so far. So it's essentially taken that range of data and used kind of a default style and kind of put that into a column chart. And we see for this Bogle run, we see a different color used for the bar for each month. And there is our legend over here showing what the colors mean. And then our second run here, code name, again, has a run for each month. Or, or uh, for the code name run, it has, for each series, it has uh, a color showing the month. And likewise, we have a vertical axis and a horizontal axis. We have some grid lines. We have a chart title across the top. Now we can go to styles and change the style. So, you know, if we want that style, we click there and then we can look at it. And that's what we had before. And then if we go back to style and click there, you can see we're going to have now the title at the top and the legend at the top. We're not going to have any grid lines, but we'll have a little label at the top of each uh, column indicating the value. So if we look at that, we can see how that would look. And finally, let's try this one here. And now we're going to have the legend at the bottom. We're still going to have some, we're going to have some grid lines, but we're not going to have any values at the top of the bars. So far, we've learned that you create a chart from a form control of type chart. You select a range of data that you want to include in the chart, the major chart type, and then from the style panel, you can affect the look of the chart by assigning different styles. Now, a style is just a collection of parameters uh, that determine what the chart looks like, and you can control those individually and create your own styles if you'd like. So let's look at uh, how the parameters are set up now for the chart we have. So if we look at this chart, we can see we have the main plot area. We have a vertical axis, a horizontal axis, a legend, and a title up here. And on the components page, we can see uh, those different major parts of a chart. So for example, here we see the title. And we can see that the title is positioned at the top of our chart. And that's what these percentage integers are all about. Uh, if we go to the XY position, which is the very top left of the overall chart, and we're going to make this title uh, allow it to use the full width and only 8% of the height and is going to be centering the text of our title up in that region of the chart. Uh, we're going to be using this font and this font size and this color. And uh, we're going to be sending the text, centering the text within that area with that alignment. So we also have uh, a section uh, related to the plot. That's the main part of the chart. And the chart type, the major chart type you, you pick, kind of determines what goes into that plot area. And again, it's, uh, it's positioned at 8% uh, uh, horizontally and 10% down. And then uh, it occupies this uh, percentage of the overall chart area. Likewise, for the vertical axis, the horizontal axis, and the legend. So let's uh, change one of these uh, things. And so we can take a look at uh, how that would affect the look of our chart. If 
For example, if we go back and look at our chart, let's say we wanted to change the color of this horizontal legend here. So right now it's in black and let's change it to something else. So that would be the horizontal axis. We can just click on the color box and let's just change that to a blue. Now if we do that and look at our uh, chart, we can see now we have blue uh, names in our horizontal axis. Let's say we wanted to change the color scheme of our different bars. Now that's actually on the uh, data panel and we could go to each individual series, select it and pick a color. So you can see we have a for the for mark for example we have the color green we could you know select a different color there and so if we would go back and we look at uh, March it's now red or we can uh, choose kind of a color theme so why don't we pick the bright colorful uh, and look at that and we see we have a totally different kind of color scheme that is automatically applied to all the different a series within each run and then it's you know the update the legend kind of reflects that as well if we go back to our components section uh, we can apply a picture so the way we do that is we just click on the picture button and we don't it uh, allows you to select a picture from the internal library of pictures that you've uh, assigned to this Excel RT file. We haven't signed any pictures yet. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to click add a picture and let's go and locate a picture. And I know where a picture is. There's a folder here called landscapes and it's got a bunch of pictures in it. So I'm going to just pick one of those pictures and click OK now. And now if I look, it didn't show the picture because I didn't tell it where it was going to place the picture. So we have to go back here. Well, I have to also select it. So I need to select the picture and then I, I want to tell it where it's going to go. So let's just go zero, zero. And for starters, let's just put the entire size of the chart for that picture. If we do that, uh, basically that picture just covers our entire chart. So obviously we don't want to do that. We go back and let's change this a bit. Let's go uh, Now look at it. Now you can see we have that. You've kind of scaled the picture and put it up in the corner, and you can so you can take this picture and kind of move it wherever you want on the chart. Uh, but another thing you can do is let's go back to our hundred percent, and now let's put this picture as a background. And what that does is it essentially puts the picture behind the chart. Now, we, we selected a picture with a lot of dark colors, so it doesn't, uh, doesn't work out so well here. But we can kind of modify that as well. We can go and let's get rid of our picture for a second and see what it looks like without the picture. Okay, so if we By default, when a chart is constructed, it will allow, when you put that chart on a sheet within your workbook, it's going to allow any underlying uh, cell, cell data or whatever to kind of show through. And so you may not want that. So you may want uh, kind of a, a background color to the chart. And so you can uh, pick a background color and uh, we don't we, we see now we have a background color of white kind of behind the whole chart now if we go back and enable our picture again 
And for transparency, we select a value where it, it uh, makes it so that picture is not so dominant and the background color of white actually shows through. And if we look at the preview, now we see the effect of that. So we can still have our kind of a faint colored picture in the background of our chart. And we can adjust, you know, how much of the picture actually comes through, how dominant it is, uh, by just adjusting this parameter for transparency here. But you can see by manipulating these different uh, parts of the chart, you can come out with all different kinds of effects of what the end chart will look like. Let's do a few other customizations to our chart. Let's get rid of the picture and maybe put a vertical title on the side here and a horizontal title across the bottom. The way we do that is we uh, will clear that picture checkbox and then we can uh, type in some text for our vertical title and our horizontal title. We can also put in a sheet and cell reference and then whatever values in that cell will be used as our vertical title or our horizontal title. On the components uh, panel, we can enable the vertical and horizontal title and uh, clear the picture. So if we look at what that looks like, we see our vertical title and our horizontal title, prob probably not quite where we wanted to position it. So we can adjust that uh, if we go back to our components. So our vertical title, let's start at uh, way over on the, the left-hand edge. We'll change that number to zero. In the horizontal title, uh, let's move that down a li little bit. And let's make sure this horizontal title is not on the left margin, but rather on the center. And let's uh, essentially give it a width of, uh, maybe a width of about 80 something here. And look at what that looks like. So, so we see we have our vertical title here now, kind of where we want it and our horizontal title. We could also change uh, what these different, the look of these different bars. For example, if we go back to our components, we can see right now the bar fill uh, option there is set to solid. We could change that to solid rounded. And you can see it, it kind of rounds it a little bit. You can't see it too good uh, with uh, this many bars because the bars are kind of small here since we have a lot of data. But there are some other uh, styles as well. For example, we could pick a, a hollow bar. Now this isn't going to show up very well because we have very light colors, but uh, let's pick a let's pick a solid outlined option here. Now in this case, we basically have the same colors, but we have a little black outline around each of the bars. So there's a lot of variations of what you can do to set up uh, what kind of chart you want and how you want it to look. Now, let's say we we decide we really like this chart and we'd like to save it so that we can apply it to other sets of data in our project. So what we can do, we can go back to the style and we can just click assign and give it a name. We'll just go with this name, my style one and uh, click OK. And now whenever we uh, create a new form control, and assign a range of data, we can just uh, come in here and click on this my style one and apply all those properties to that chart to get just the chart we want. Let's go ahead and delete the chart we just created and then create a new chart with a different collection of data and then we'll apply that same style. So we can do that using the uh, tool here. 
and we'll hold down the shift key click and we've got rid of our chart and now if we just click without the uh, shift key down it adds another chart so we'll just call that chart one again and we're going to call that'll be our form control bf type chart and we can see we have the starting point of our chart and with the edit tool now we can bring up the form control properties and we're going to go with the same column style chart there and bring up the click the edit and now that's where it prompts us to enter a range of data so in this case we're just going to chart out these first three columns in these first three games so let's just go uh, from a1 down to d5 so sheet one a1 to d5 and now it's can set up our three runs of data and you can see these if you select one of these runs of data or I should say series of data you will uh, have a range of cells from which it's pulling the values and if you play around with it and kind of understand how that works you'll see that you can actually uh, that's, by default it's kind of all set up for you just when you pick the range of data that you want to chart but you could actually click the plus button down here and add additional series and then define a range of cells from this sheet or any sheet uh, to be included in that chart and you can get rid of uh, a series by selecting and click the minus or you can use the up and down uh, buttons to kind of move them around and that'll change the uh, uh, the placement within the chart where that where that series is going to be uh, displayed so a lot of things you can kind of customize here if we if we go to our style and and we'll pick the existing style that we set up before and look at it we can see uh, we basically have our chart but we see there's a few things missing and that's because we didn't have a vertical title text or horizontal title text yet and it also the color scheme we used isn't actually part of the style so if we go and change those two things if we go back to data pick that same color scheme and then we go back to to uh, back on data here let's uh, let's give some text for these titles so let's go vertical title and horizontal title and look at that. Now we see our vertical tile or horizontal tile title in our color scheme. If we go back to the form control dialog for our chart and we pick a different chart type, so let's pick bar instead of column, and then go and look at that. Uh, let's, let's pick a style here. And we can see we have the same set of data basically those three games for January, February, and March. And now we've kind of mapped it out in uh, a bar chart instead of a column chart. And we can uh, play around with different styles of what that would look like. And if, if uh, based on the amount of data and the ranges of all the different uh, parameters there, if it doesn't, uh, things don't quite look the way we want we may have to modify some of the uh, properties of that style to, to get the real look that we want to achieve but we can see what the different options are here for bar charts and let's quit out of that and look at a line chart as another option so if we look at that and then we uh, we see we have different styles for line charts and we probably need to get a little heavier color there so let's go darker color scheme and so now you can see we have kind of a line graph uh, we'll look at some of the different options for how we can apply different styles to that line graph and again if you don't cut quite get what you want you can uh, go to the components and essentially edit any of the parameters that go to constructing the look of that chart and then just uh, give it your own style name 
and then use that for this chart or any other uh, charts that you want to create in the document. In fact, uh, once you create a style, it's essentially stored in the preferences file uh, for your user account for the XLRT builder, and then you can apply it to any Excel uh, in XLRT files that you construct with the XLRT builder. The process of constructing uh, most chart types from a range of data is very similar. The uh, scatter plot is a bit different. We're going to look at that now. So we have a set of data here. We essentially have a set of X values and Y values for this first series of, of dots and X and Y values for another series and X and Y values for a third series. And we're going to plot that out in a, a scatter chart. So we'll start by creating the chart here and we'll call that scatter chart of type chart. And then uh, we'll bring up our form control and we're going to pick type scatter and now when we click the edit it's, it's going to ask us for the range of data with a little different explanation of what actual type of range of data you want to pick. Now in this case we're going to use this collection of data up here where our values are stored in, in uh, columns. So we're going to go from B1 to G seven so sheet two b1 to g7 and now we see we have three different series uh, and if we look at style if we pick this style and look at the preview we can see how those xy values are plotted out so we have three different series there's our color scheme and we can see how they're plotted out with in it the uh, chart uh, runtime software automatically constructs the uh, vertical and the horizontal axis uh, based on the actual values of these XY values. So let's look at a few other options. And again, each of these are just different ways, different styles for plotting out the information for this chart. So once we uh, click through here, find one we want or further customize it uh, in the components area and it's important to keep in mind that based on the major chart type that you pick, a lot of the options here will have different uh, values to choose from. So you'll be able to, uh, some of the options will change to kind of tailor for that specific type of chart. So once you get what you want, uh, and then you OK out of the dialog, and then you'll see your chart, uh, and you can position and resize that chart as needed. To summarize, XLRT can bring the calculated data to life within your application using dynamic charts. You can choose from a variety of chart types and styles or customize them to meet your specific needs.